Hey everyone, welcome, welcome. This is Margie Santos. Welcome to another episode of the Synergy Network Talk Show. We are so excited to have you on, on tonight. We have a very special guest with us and his name is Rich Swingle. Welcome, Rich. Hey, I'm so glad to be here, Margie. Thank you. Thank you for accepting the invitation. We're so honored to have you here with us. Oh, great, great to be here. The honor is mine. Amen, amen. Let's put the banner here. Um, and so, Rich, before we start the program, we always like to pray and Wonderful. invite the Lord in here with us. You know, anything we do, we're, we want to invite the Lord. So, Heavenly yeah. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. We thank you, Lord, that we have our brother, Rich Swingle, here with us. And he's just going to be sharing all the wonderful things that you're doing in his life, Father God. We thank you for his life, Father God, because through his acting and everything that he's doing, he has touched so many lives, Father God, and many have been brought to you because of these movies, Father God. And it's just an honor, Father God, to have him here with us. And we just ask you that tonight you will use him in a mighty way, Father God, and you would put the words in in in, in his heart and you know in his mouth that he would speak uh, to the public tonight, Father God, and just give some encouragement and share the wonderful things that you're doing in his life father god thank you lord for tonight's show thank you for everything that you're about to do and everything that you're going to do in the future father god in jesus name we pray amen 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 thank you thank so you. much rich again and so we just want to take a minute to go ahead and um share this video i like to um, make sure the platforms have it. Let's just uh, share it into your personal page or your groups. You can share it. And those that are watching, when you see some people are logging in, let me open up the comments here. If uh, Whoever's logging in, um, if you can please share the video, help us share it. Let's make sure everybody is tuned in. All right, there you are, the Synergy Network talk show. talk show. Yes. All right. All right. It's a share, share. Well, while you're setting all this up, I have to thank GW Tolley for yes. connecting us. I loved your interview with him. I thought that went so well. Oh, GW is such a blessing. Yeah. Such a blessing to Synergy. And he he's a great networker. You know, he his, yes. his gift is, you know, he has a lot of gifts, but just connecting people, he's so good at that. So shout out to GW. Yeah. Uh, GW met me, I think we first met at a content film festival. Okay. And he, and then in... There were a number of things that he said that I felt were like straight from the throne. But the one that is like the top of my mind was when we were at the Christian Worldview Film Festival. And he said, I feel like God wants me to introduce you to these people. And one of them oh, was a singer. If you're watching, so sorry. Um, that was a little while ago. I didn't plan to tell this story. <laughs> but she sang on the main stage and let me record that and use that with our students at the Rocky Mountain Christian Filmmakers Camp. And she said a little message to them. It was, it was right on. It was, her message was right for our students. The song we sang all week long, it was, it was just from the throne that he would introduce me to her. So. Amen. Yeah. Let me just uh, share this in one more group. So usually they say we couldn't find the show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. And let's turn this off so we have no interruptions. Okay, praise God. I didn't get that. Could you yeah, try again? Get... Yeah, Siri wants to talk now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get right into it. Um, Rich Swingle is here with us. And, you know, um, before we start with the, your career and everything that you're doing for the Lord, um, just share with us a little bit more about yourself where were you born your background any information that you would want to share with us sure well i was born and raised in southern oregon on a 70 acre farm so when i moved to new york i was literally going from that 70 acre farm to an 8 by 10 room on times square oh, but my goodness. but uh, i i came to the lord when i was 5 my mom uh, introduced me to the lord and got grounded in a great youth group there and with Ron Mulkey, who had us doing sketch work in, uh, in the church, which was phenomenal. And actually, before that, I played Mr. Beaver in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. 
all you could see was my face. I, it was just a bunch of fur. Wow. But, <laughs> but for, you know, all these decades, I've been declaring Aslan's on the move. <laughs> so uh, what a joy that was to get started that way. And you would ask me before we got started, uh, Margie, if I knew right from the start that I wanted to be an actor. And the answer to that is sort of. I really enjoyed it, but I was afraid of that as a career. Okay. In Southern Oregon, they have the Ashland Shakespeare Festival, and I took some workshops there and heard from the people that were giving these workshops how poor they were and how, um, you know, they were relying on second jobs to make things work. And I was like, oh, that's, I don't, I don't want that. I want a, a steady paycheck. So I ran away from my calling and, uh, I was heading, you know, in utter rebellion, I was training to be a pastor. Okay. A beautiful calling for most. But for me, the Lord, when I was in seminary, mm -hmm. made it clear I wasn't called to minister from behind a pulpit, but through the performing arts. And so I ended up moving to New York City, getting my master's in theater here. Oh, nice. And I'll be honest, my plan was to grab that diploma, walk off the stage onto a plane back to Oregon. <laughs> but uh, there was a wonderful woman blowing me a kiss from the balcony. Oh, and, <laughs> yes. And, and Joyce and I have been married now coming up on 25 years. Wow. Our, congratulations. I, I know. I, it just seems <laughs> unbelievable to say this, but our silver <laughs> anniversary is coming oh, up in March. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. So you met your wife in New York City and then you stayed. Yes. Actually, we met at a retreat north of the city. And, and this is an interesting story. Um, we had all of these commonalities, common friends. My best friend, Mac, had been to her house. Um, his, his roommate was discipling her, Jerry, and uh, she was giving an extra on top of her tithe to the church where I was living at the Lamb's Theater slash church slash uh, ministry to the homeless that had two off-Broadway theaters. It was like heaven on earth to me because these were like all of my passions under one roof. But um, we, God was keeping us apart until the time was right. And uh, oh, how glad I am that friends of ours um, introduced us before we met. They had, uh, Brad and Leslie had been attending the Lambs. He was working on his PhD in math at Columbia, mm -hmm. ended up moving to the Bronx. They got a car and started attending Westchester Chapel, where my wife and I are in leadership now. And they were hosting, Westchester Chapel was hosting a combined Seder. They shared the space with a Messianic Jewish congregation. And so they, uh, at this Seder, our pastor, my future pastors, were putting together a intercession list. So everyone that was going to be coming to this singles retreat where they were going to be teaching was assigned an intercessor. So they saw my name on this list and they tell Joyce, that's your soulmate. You're going to meet him at this retreat. What? And then they, yes. And then they, <laughs> oh I know. And then they scheduled a breakfast with me and told me the same thing. So it was actually at this retreat, mm -hmm. a Nazarene retreat, which is now different than it was then. Back then it was Camp Taconic. Now I believe it's called the Mirror Lake Conference Center, but okay. it's still run by the Church of the Nazarene. Yeah. Wow, that's a beautiful story. <laughs> I know. Wow. Amazing. So have you regretted uh, staying in New York? No, no. <laughs> I love New York. We've prayed yeah. a couple of times after the lockdowns. You yeah, know, no, it's, it's nothing like New York. I was born and raised in New York and it's nothing like it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When we were sitting with spiritual mentors about, you know, should we stay here? Because it was you know, you, you, you're in New York City because you can do things, but they shut down restaurants and theaters and oh, we lost mm -hmm. our gym membership. So, so, but through the prayer, we felt like, no, we're, we're called to stay. And um, we're glad, we're glad we have. We've, we've seen God moving in really specific targeted ways since then. So we're, we're really grateful for that. Yeah. Amen. So, um, Rich, we just want to give a few shout outs. Um, the people that have joined us tonight, uh, we have Dwayne C. Eubank and he's saying hello. Hello, Rich. Um, 
So, <laughs> and there are people who are logged on. Um, if you want uh, us to give you a shout out, just comment in, you know, comment there, um, ask Rich some questions and we'll get right back to you. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Oh, we also have, oh, Pastor Javier Centeno. Um, he says blessings to you. Uh, blessings. Uh, and, all right. So you guys just keep on with the comments and we'll, we'll come back to you. <laughs> so, so Rich, you are an award-winning actor, you're a writer, and you've performed in six continents, 39 nations, and hundreds of venues around the world. When I read your bio, I was just like in awe. And then I went to your IMDb account and said, let me read more about him. And it's just like so much. You've done so much. Like. Uh... God has really blessed you and opened doors for you. Praise God. Yeah, we're, mm -hmm. we're really, really blessed. I, I have to pinch myself every day. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever think that it would blow up like that? That it would be big? No. It, again, when, when I moved to New York, it was to get that master's in theater. I was going to teach. I, I remember mm -hmm. telling my friend Dusty, you know, if I start going out on auditions, just tell me, no, you're called <laughs> to educational theater. Uh -huh. But I'm so glad she didn't stop me. Um, God just started opening up, opening up doors and I developed mm -hmm. the one man plays to, to kind of have a, a, a groundwork, a framework. And the, then I was hoping to, you know, get into larger plays and, and films. And so to see that actually coming to pass has been a, a real blessing. Amen. And I, I was reading your reviews. And so if you don't mind, I'll read one of your reviews. I was just like, Wow. So this one came from Kimberly Vaughn, and she's a Tony-nominated oh. producer. And she said, Rich's work has not only is, uh, is not only a dramatical appeal, but is a spiritual nourishing. And that's quite a powerful combination. Theater has the ability to lift people's consciousness and dramatically impact our lives. The theater pieces that Rich creates and into which he breathes life so lovingly with such dedication ascend to these essential heights. Mm. Oh, that when I read that, I was like, wow, she described you in one oh, paragraph. <laughs> well, praise God. She she came to see one of my plays pretty mm -hmm. early in my career, and it was a huge boost, a huge, huge boost to me. Uh wow. encouragement. Yeah. Amen. So I gotta ask you, Rich, because I see you've done over 53 movies that you've been featured in. Um, is, is did that number go up or um so that's probably the films that I've acted in and then probably some other oh, like, like combination. Yeah. So okay. I don't know if it's, if it's more than 45 films total, oh, it might be, okay. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, I lose track. <laughs> a lot of those were short films though, okay. though I do tell people that sometimes you're on set longer for a short film than you are for a, you know, a day player or a, a short, a small role in a feature film. So uh -huh. So all of that experience counts. I, I encourage yes. any young actors that are watching, you know, mm -hmm. to to get involved with short films because you're in, you're out, you got a credit, you got, you know, something for your reel. So oh, it's that's a, amazing. And I, really I just got to ask you, you know, out of everything that you've been involved in, um, what has been your favorite project? So that's such a <laughs> such a challenging question because somebody was asked this at the Christ, uh, yeah Christian Worldview Film Festival last week. Mm -hmm. David Cook was asked that question and he said, "Well, you know, they're all like our children." <laughs> and um, but if so, you had to pick one, if you had, to I pick know, one. I know. I think the one that I would he, see he he picked the one where he met his wife. So that was that oh. was uh, that was easy. I met my wife before I started film work. But okay. um, we've been on about seven films together and have 37 screen children together. <sighs> but um, if I were, if I had to pick one, uh, oh, I, I guess I, I would have to say, um, uh, my mind is going back and forth. Can I say a couple that are, are like highlights? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so, so I think my all time favorite of any I've ever done is Indescribable. And mm. I, Joyce and I played husband and wife together is the first time we'd performed on film together. And, but the reason I love it so much is that it tells the story. I, I play the hymn writer, Frederick Lehman, and okay. uh, he wrote the hymn, The Love of God. And in the film, he hasn't figured out how to end it. The third stanza, 
And so his 10 year old son is kind of the protagonist of the movie. And he's kind of trying to figure out what is love? What is the love of God? Mm -hmm. And so he goes to all of his older siblings and asks them, you know, what is, he brings the younger siblings with him and they're, they're interviewing the older siblings. What is the love of God? Well, they all have a different take on it. And it's just so beautiful to see this exploration. And, and then they find a poem by a, a rabbi from the Middle Ages. So here's this German hymn writer who uses a Jewish rabbi's uh, hymn, his, his poem, to finish out this song. It fits perfectly into his song. It's really astonishing. And just a beautiful story. I weep every time I watch it. And uh, so that, that, I think, has to be, you know, overall. Your favorite? Number- my favorite, but it's only a close first over a, a new one called Second Chances. And I play the mentor of a young man who was in a, a horrible accident where his best friend dies. And so he is in a state of depression. He doesn't know what to do with his life. And so I I work at a, an office where his uncle works and kind of befriend him and and start to mentor him and end up leading him to the Lord. And so because you see discipleship unto salvation, unto deeper discipleship, that model uh, for a film, I think is just, it's just what our society needs right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dutch Dutch Sheets, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he has a a daily give him 15 um, devotional. And the other day he was talking about how the various uh, revivals of history um, have oftentimes focused just on evangelism. Mm. But he is, he is praying that this new wave of revival that I think we're all sensing in the face of so much darkness these days, that it's going to be not only about evangelism, but also about discipleship, which is so absolutely critical. Yeah, that's so much needed. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. and I see you are, um, you're also in a lot of Christian films. Um, one that you were portraying Jesus. Yes, the messenger's <laughs> box. That was very fun. Yes. Yeah, I mean, fun, fun to play Jesus on a cross. You know, that's maybe the wrong word, but meaningful. How was that experience? I mean, when they first told you that you had to play Jesus. Oh, yeah, I was excited. I've played Jesus in a lot of the one man plays that I do. Mm -hmm. uh, But to play him on film was very, very meaningful. And, um, you know, there was a really, really special moment while while the makeup artist was putting the nail in my wrist. I I said to her, you know, he did that for you. It's just really, really a a meaningful moment, a couple of meaningful moments on that set. Awesome. And so we do have some uh, questions here. Oh, great. Um, So one of the questions is, Rich, how did Chariots of Fire inspire you as a young man? (gasps) A lot. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we got the record, you know, the Vangelis record and would play it before every track or cross country meet. So the music really, um, you know, obviously the movie first, we saw it in the theaters in 1981. And, um, I say theaters, we might have seen it more than once uh, in theaters, but we certainly got the VHS and watched it and watched it and and played the record. And I was always so intrigued by that little phrase at the end, you know, when he died, all of Scotland mourned that he went to be a missionary to China. And so that's that's really a discipleship story, too, because he was on the top of the world. He wouldn't run on a Sunday. And all of the world hated him, you know, called him a traitor to his nation. But he he went ahead, 23 years old, and he said, no, I'm not going to run on a Sunday. It's a day to honor the Lord, not myself. <laughs> so, so he shifted his focus and trained for the 400 meters, which his daughter Patricia told me. Uh, he later told his wife that's what he was born to run, that race. And he might not have ever known it had that heat for the 100 been run on a Sunday. Uh, had it not been run on a Sunday. See, he was he was considered the Usain Bolt of his day, the, the fastest man alive. But Harold Abrams was pretty much just as fast. They had never run head to head. And so everything was building up to the 1924 Paris Olympics when Harold Abrams and Eric Little were going to go head to head and prove who the fastest man alive was. Then that race, you know, the heat was held on a on a Sunday and he wouldn't run it. But when he he retrained, he really focused on the 400 and he broke the world record 
by such a distance, the distance between him and second place was five meters. Mm -hmm. And though the world, his world record was broken, not too long after that, if memory serves, it was 30 years before the distance between first and second in the 400 meters at the Olympics was, was bettered. So he really changed how the race was run. Before wow. that, it was considered middle distance and he turned it into a sprint. <laughs> <laughs> so interesting. Oh my goodness. So, so yeah. So then I, I uh, pursued doing that as a one-man play. We were in Edinburgh uh, for a second honeymoon after a, a tour of 16 cities I did with a different play in, in England. And Joyce had business in Ireland and, and we reconnected in Edinburgh and we went to Holy Corner. This is where there are four churches on all four corners of that intersection. And we wanted to visit the church that Eric Little attended. Well, we got there on a Saturday and we were like, well, how do we know which one he attended? Well, one of them was the Eric Little Center. And so we, it was closed that day, but we really wanted to visit it. And we went back on Sunday morning and it was like, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, which one, which, where, where should we go? And we happened to go to the one that he did attend. And in fact, his nice. niece, Peggy Judge, was there. She talked with us, uh, oh, met us. It must have been at, such an experience. Uh, met, us oh, at the, goodness. <laughs> met us at the Eric Little Center the next day, showed us all these, uh, you know, private materials in the back rooms and I got a copy of one of the out of print uh, biographies and that that got the research started. Wow. Amen. Amen. So, Rich, I see that you have a major event next week. Yes. In New York City. Christ, Christ over, Christ over career. career. Yes. <laughs> We're in the shirt. Yes. Yeah, so tell us, for those who don't know, tell us more about this event. Okay, so a little backstory on the whole concept of Christ over career. Cameron Arnett was back in the 80s in Miami Vice and uh, one of the Star Trek, I think the Next Generation and mm -hmm. Doogie Howser. And there was a show coming out where he was going to be the featured character. Well, he found out that there was going to need to be some partial nudity. He said no to that. So they came back to him and said, well, we'll get a body double. Mm. And he wanted to say, yes, here's this major show with him yeah. as the star. But the Holy Spirit was speaking to him. No, yeah. I, you know the what? Holy they're going to say, no, you're not doing that. <laughs> they're going to think that's me. And right. that's just as bad, you know, and I, I, I'm representing Christ and I can't do that. Amen. Mm -hmm. So he, he dropped out of that contract and, uh, kind of got blacklisted. He didn't do a lot of work on film or television for a long while. He kind of started his own uh, media ministry, Caps, mm -hmm. and started producing some films, started getting cast in some films, and is now kind of one of the one of oh, the guys you he's, see. He's all over the place. So the I place. just want to give yeah. you a little backstory with me and Cami. Um, yeah. when I, yes, I know him personally. Uh, oh. so Yes, amen. So when I started my business in 2016, which is Synergy Network Worldwide, a networking, you know, business for the faith-based community, and I had my first, you know, we were doing uh, monthly events, but then I said, I want to do a gala, you know, where we get dressed up and all the Christians come together. And don't you know, Rich, that Cami and his wife, BJ, came all the way down from Georgia, and they, they uh, blessed us doing the media, and then he also spoke. So wow. it was it was just a blessing, you know, to start your business and um, do your first gala and for him to show up. You know, I was just I was so blessed. That is fantastic. Yeah. He, he and BJ are, oh. are they're just gems. Yes. They're, yeah. They are sold it's out. A blessing for the Lord. to the community. And they Absolutely. they go out for everybody. And that's yeah. why God has opened the doors for them. You know? Yeah. If some are watching yeah. and still don't have a, a face to the name. Uh, my favorite film of all right now is Overcomer. It's kind of yes. like the chariots of fire of our That's generation. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and he plays the father who I don't want to give anything away, but he he is uh, in a in a hospital bed. That's when we meet him. So, yes, I don't think we see any footage in the trailers of him outside of that hospital bed. <laughs> he but, was definitely in there the whole time. right uh, now. Well, he did such an amazing job. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. The role such he played. Such a powerful performance. It was. It had everybody in tears. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so he is. Uh -huh, go ahead. 
Yeah, I was just going to say when he was doing the publicity for that, yeah. his story started to come out and in the interviews and that the term, I think when he was talking about it, that term, Christ, I had to put Christ over career. Mm -hmm. And he thought, you know, I think that would encourage people to kind of do a hashtag Christ over career and kind of get the word out. And and they obviously produce T-shirts for yeah. it and <laughs> and really, really trying to encourage people to think that way, because guess what? That's what our society needs right now is to put yes. it, be putting Christ ahead of everything else. Mm -hmm. And and so he had this idea hey, let's do a kickoff in New York City where his faith was really uh, started to get grounded and foundational. Uh, he was attending a church. I know many people who have attended. Um, it's called the Unbroken Chain, which is sadly no longer in existence, but yeah. the, um, the members are still meeting in a different church. Mm -hmm. But they, uh, they were just all about growing deep in the Lord, doing street evangelism, just uh, living out their faith in powerful, powerful ways. And so he got a, really got that grounding here and is bringing it, bringing it right here to New York wow. City, August 19th and 20th. Yeah. So this is a two day event. And, yeah. um, and where exactly in the city? I got to look that up. It's going to be at Theater 315. And mm -hmm. that's at 315 West 47th Street in Manhattan. Okay. And on the 19th, the doors will open at 6.30 and the event will begin at 7. And then on Saturday, we're going to go 10 to 3 with some breakout sessions. My mm -hmm. wife, Joyce, is going to tell her story about how she came to the Lord while she was working at Sports Illustrated, oh, of all places. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes, yes. One of our pastors now mm -hmm. uh, led her to the Lord while, while Joyce was working for her. So that was a real blessing. And... Um, and she's going to also talk about um, about how God called her out of the workforce. She laid down a position as the um, vice president of worldwide marketing at Business Week magazine. Walked away from that. Wow. The Lord. So I, we got to get her on the show next hey, time. Hey, <laughs> I, I, yeah. I know how to reach her. So. <laughs> so how has it been like working with her in in ministry and doing all these, uh, you know? Uh, productions with her oh, with your wife. I just love it. I just love it. I always, you know, we have our, our separate ministries apart, but mm -hmm. when we come together to do ministry, it's just, there's nothing like it. You know, oh. God, God uh, yeah. brought us together. We have no doubt about that. And so every chance we get to, to combine our ministries, I feel like it, it's an exponentially greater uh, result, you know, in hearts and lives. Oh, that's so, great. So yeah. she's going to be there and you're, are you yes. doing your one man show at this event? Well, Cameron, if you're watching, Hey, that's an idea. I keep yes. thinking about that and keep forgetting <laughs> to pitch the idea, but maybe I'll do something. I'm, yeah. I'm definitely leading two workshops on Saturday. The mm -hmm. one is social drama based. That's where I got my master's thesis was in social drama. Okay. And it's basically improv with some extra tools so we're going to be putting people into a real life scenario where somebody has to make a decision for Christ over career or not. Oh, and, nice. and we'll use some tools to kind of stop the action and see how are you feeling? What are you thinking? What, you know, what, what are the things that we hear in our heads, you know, mm -hmm. when these decisions come up? And then the other thing I'm going to do is lead a workshop on enacted prayer. Okay. And this is basically just showing God what we want him to do. We were very comfortable asking him, you know, Lord, we, would you do this? Mm -hmm. But in enacted prayer, there's no words. We just show him a scene that we would love to see come to pass. And wow. so, so we're going to, I'm going to teach that to the group and mm -hmm. then we'll, we'll have at least one enacted prayer for uh, people to make Christ over career decisions. You know, and, and this is this is great because, you know, New York City, we got the Broadway and we got all these other theaters. So this is great for all those actors and producers that are in these to come and see, you know, the, the big difference about, you know, Christian movies and Christian acting and, you know, just bringing God and, you know, faith into, into these productions. It's, Absolutely. It's, it's going to be a big blessing. So this is open to the public, right? Absolutely. Yep. Anyone, okay. any, and it, it's not just the, the career doesn't have to be just in the performing arts. In fact, Ben Valdez, one of our Christ over career ambassadors, mm -hmm. he's going to be speaking about what that means as a, an owner of a business. 
So whatever your business is, whatever your career is, I think you'll come and, and receive and, and be edified and encouraged. Yeah. It's going to be a big benefit for, for anyone. Yes. Yeah, yes. absolutely. And we have all those details right now at richdrama.com forward slash Christ over career. If people want to jot that down, you can get all the details there. Wow. And so this is a kickoff, but I could see this going in every state. Uh, yes. This is, oh, yeah. Lord, hear our <laughs> prayer. <laughs> yes. Amen. You know, it's, it's just, you know, production is big and it's growing, you know, and um, yeah, so absolutely. There's a need for this. Oh, absolutely. Uh, NBC Universal now has a faith division. I heard HBO has a faith division. What? Um, Sony for a long time has had a faith division. So they're, they're starting to get that there's a market here. Yeah. And, and George uh, Escobar, when he spoke at the very first Christian Worldview Film Festival, he said he believes it's only a matter of time before that tipping point is going to happen. And it's the faith films that are getting more at the box office than the secular films, because you know what? They're yeah. all about, they're all about cotton candy. You know, mm. uh, it's sweet for a moment, but there's no eternal message in, in many of them. Mm -hmm. uh, or there's a message that's turning people away from God. But as revival rolls across the country and around the world, uh, it's our prayer that people are going to walk into these films that are going to be higher and higher quality, and they're going to have a message that stirs the soul, that that draws right. people. That's what it's all about. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm. Wow, and there's so many um, other Christian productions out there, TBN, and um, so I pray that everybody comes out to support what you guys are doing. Amen. 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 Yeah, thank you all right. so much, Margie. All right, and so... I hear little birdie uh, talking about you're being honored soon. Yes, at the, <laughs> at the Great Lakes so, Christian Film Festival. I'm yes. so blown away by this. And I heard. I was like, wow, he's going to be honored and it's so well deserved. Oh, praise God. And I I don't know what that means, except that they've, they've honored a different actor every year. So mm -hmm. I'm really blessed to see what that might be. And they're going to have my play, or at least some of my play. We haven't worked out all the details, but mm -hmm. I, it's going to be just before 9-11. In fact, the closing day is 9-11. Oh, and I have a play uh, on 9-11. So, so that's, uh, that's what we're talking about right now. Mm -hmm. I just found out about this, so we don't know all the details. <laughs> but and this is in Buffalo. Buffalo yes. New York. GLCFF.com. Great okay. Lakes Christian Film Festival www.glcff.com. Perfect. Yeah, we'll definitely get more information about that because that is going to be a great event. And like I said, you've done so much that um, is just deserving, you know, uh, it's, it's well-deserved and, you know, well, just, um, amen, amen. Um, and also share with us, uh, you were recently at the Christian World Route Worldview Film Festival. Yes, it was, that. A, it was amazing. <laughs> there were 17 baptisms. Really? At a Margie, film festival? 17. I know. What? That's what everyone Wait was saying. Wait a minute. That at never happens. Festival, <laughs> it was so intense. The, what? So it, it, was, it was at the, um, the Kendrick Brothers Church, Sherwood Baptist Church, okay. which launched Flywheel. And then there's there, some people might not have heard of Flywheel. That was the very first film they did. But then facing the giants, fireproof, courageous. Um, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to miss a few in there, but but overcomer like arrows, and mm -hmm. now life mark, which they showed there, and it's fantastic. Oh, it's amazing. Awesome. Um, I'm, I have an interview with the Kendrick brothers that's going to post on September 9th. Two, the first two have already posted. Um, you can you can find those at richdrama.com forward slash. Uh, headline prayer, richdrama.com forward slash headline prayer. You can see parts one and two of the Kendrick Brothers interview. And the third interview is going to be about their film Life Mark. And I'm awesome. also going to do interviews with the leading ladies of Life Mark. So this is uh, the, the woman uh, who played Alex Kendrick's wife. Uh, mm -hmm. her, her name is, um, oh no. Um, oh, <laughs> If she's watching, okay. I, I, I wasn't prepared to talk about this. Um, I can see your face. Oh, I should just pull this up. Lifemark.com. Lifemarkmovie.com. It's coming out on September 9th. Okay. Um, 
Dawn. Dawn Long. Yeah. Mm. Um, so she plays Alex Kendrick's hus uh, wife. And then an old friend of mine from the 90s, we were in uh, plays off Broadway together. Uh, I called her Becky Rogers. Now she's Rebecca Rogers Nelson, Rebecca Nelson, I think. Okay. But um, she plays the wife of Kirk Cameron. And so I'm getting those two gals together. And then I happen to run into the woman who plays Don Long's younger self, uh, Marissa Hampton at the Christian Worldview Film Festival. And she's agreed to come on as well. So oh, we'll nice. have the three of them talking about what it was like to be in this film. They connected with the real people that they're portraying. So mm -hmm. I think that's going to be really interesting. That's and, neat. and Marissa's mom, this is so touching to me. This movie is about, about adoption. So, mm -hmm. so profoundly timely after Roe v. Wade was abolished for the word to get out, you know, now all these babies are going to be born that are not wanted, sadly, and they're mm -hmm. going to need adoptive parents. So yes. the fact that this movie is coming out in September, I think is so beautiful, so perfect. It's timely. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I know God's going to use this, but uh, Marissa's mother didn't tell her this until after she was cast in the film, but, but she, uh, she carried their first child while she was in high school. This, her daughter knew what she didn't know was that she was pressured to get an abortion. Oh. And um, she told that to her daughter um, while she was taking a bath. So she couldn't face her, but through the shower curtain, she, she shared this, this deep truth and then praise God, she had the, the courage to share it with me in an interview that we're going to run on September 9th. So that'll, that'll air on headlineprayer.org. Um, on September 9th. Wow, that's that's amazing. I love all these projects that are happening and the projects to come. God is just really moving. Yes. You know, he's moving in this Amen. year and next year. And we already have a line of things that are coming out. So, woo, praise God. <laughs> Amen. And, yes. and speaking, of, speaking of him moving, I wanted to get back to the baptisms if we have a moment to do yes. that. Yes. So, um, oh, so the pastor of Sherwood Baptist Mm -hmm. He gets up and he shares this powerful sermon and it all builds toward baptism. And he basically tells how their church has had dozens, I think over 60 baptisms in, in the last month. Mm -hmm. And he said, I feel like God is doing something here and we want to extend the invitation to anybody here at the film festival. If you've never been baptized, if you're not a Christian wow. and want to become one and get baptized, mm -hmm. you know, he told the story of the Ethiopian eunuch. Uh, I believe in God. Let's there's a there's some water. Let's get baptized now. Or if you maybe were baptized early in your life, but maybe it was just religious, you know, maybe you were right. just going to church, but mm -hmm. all of a sudden you got into a personal relationship with Jesus. And wow, you know what? I want to make a public declaration that I am in. And the way Stephen Kendrick, who baptized most of the people, he said it's like put it on a wedding ring. You know, this is a public declaration. This is exactly. me saying I am in with the Lord. And it was so, so amazing. That, that, that's just crazy. Like how this happened at a festival. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You never see this. I think that was probably one of the first times in history that something like that would happen, but praise God. Yes. It might've been, might've been. There were four people that I knew and one um, his son got baptized and he didn't know this, but the, his wife was praying that their son would get baptized at this film festival. Oh. She had no idea what was coming. She was just thinking, oh, maybe, you know, yeah. maybe while no one's looking, we can use the baptismal. You know, that was in her mind. And then when she hears it, she's like, what? And, and um, the son had these three objectives. Uh, three reasons he didn't want to get baptized. And one by one, the pastor knocked them all down one by one. And so uh, that interview, I did an interview with them right after they were baptized. We'll post that soon. Oh, and, perfect. And my my friend, Nushig uh, Salvador, who was in um, Perpetua, The Diary of Perpetua with me, a movie coming out soon. Um, she <laughs> She was baptized as an infant but has had a, a real resurgence of, of faith. Uh, it's just beautiful to see her grow in the Lord. And she was yeah. like, yes, I want to do this. <laughs> so you know, that happens to a lot of us. Like for me, uh, for example, I was 
baptized when I was 15, you know, because my parents made me do it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you yeah, know? Sure. <laughs> You know, it's like, you're getting baptized on Sunday. And it was like, okay. But, yeah, to do it again as an adult and yeah. on your own terms, you know, and yeah. your own free will, that's uh -huh. just nothing like that. Oh, you know? yeah. So, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Stephen told them all, um, you know, you can give whatever testimony you want. Just keep it to 30 seconds. <laughs> And uh, most of them just said, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And oh, based on your testimony, I baptize you. But Nushig was so fired up. Now, I transcribed this for the article that just posted, which you can see at richdrama.com forward slash headline prayer. I wrote an article about the film festival. Oh, nice. So you can okay. read exactly what she said. But it was something along the lines of Jesus is my Lord and my Savior, my rock and my fortress, my Mashiach, my Messiah, oh. my my. Uh, my doctor and my great physician. And it was just, oh, it was so beautiful. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and at the end of it all, Stephen Kendrick goes, I think she's ready. <laughs> it was That's just amazing. I mean, not only to get baptized at a film festival, but get baptized by Stephen Kendrick. I know. I know. <laughs> I want the, that. <laughs> the, the, first wow. one out of, the first one out of the shoot, and this one you can see at richdrama.com forward slash headline prayer, um, was... Uh, Micah Hansen, who played one of the mothers in the Kendrick Brothers film Like Arrows, and she was Martha in, or is Martha in Washington's Armor, because there are two more of those that are coming out soon. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, she led the line. She was first in, and wow. uh, it was just so beautiful. I got That's to interview amazing. her afterwards, and she talked about how special that was to have been in in the Kendricks films and then to have Stephen Kendrick baptize her. Baptize really, really her. Really wow. Fun. She was blessed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, speaking yeah, yeah. of the film festival, we don't want to uh, leave this out. There was you were selected. You were selected. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, a selected. film I was in was selected. Yes. yes. Um, Tell us was, more about that. <laughs> it's called Mine. And you can mm -hmm. see it at richdrama.com forward slash. I think there may be a link at mine. That's faster to write down. But I know you can get to it at this is my child, richdrama.com forward slash this is my child. And again, the timing of the Lord is unbelievable. Uh, we did this film three years ago, and for <laughs> the, the director got married, they had a baby. And, and so, uh, you know, life kind of got in the way. Um, and I may have something to do with that because I had an idea for some something that I think might have been challenging. Anyway, I don't want to share that here, but <laughs> but um, but bottom line, it it took some time to get it out to the public. And what do you know? Here's this film about a young woman who's had an abortion and is grieving. She realizes what she's done and doesn't know what to do with that. Mm -hmm. And so I play some someone who that's that's the reason I didn't want to say what it was about. It's kind of a spoiler alert what I was working on. But my character helps her uh, begin the healing process. And, uh, for such a time as this, the fact that wow. it came out. Yeah, so no, close. everything in God's timing, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh my goodness. Amen. Wow. That yeah. is amazing. Wow. Rich. I, it's just like, we could go on and on with your projects. You have done so much. Oh, uh, no, well, like... <laughs> before we get to any of those, I, I do want to say from the great lakes Christian uh, film festival i'm heading straight to content 22 oh. and i'm very excited about that we are up for um four awards that i know of but i i say that because um i submitted two of the programs that joyce and i are on for intercessors for america uh, we're on on a regular basis we're on pray with mm -hmm. others live Okay. And then I was on one time with Pray for America's Leaders. So every Tuesday, they have Pray with Others Live. Joyce and I are on the second and fifth Tuesdays. And then every Thursday is Pray with America's Leaders. And so I happened to be on um, Pray with America's Leaders that one time. That was the episode I submitted. So so praise God, they, they're both getting uh, nominated. They both oh, got awesome. nominated. And then I'm also in the diary, Perpe the diary of Perpetua, which was also nominated. So, yay! Uh, yay! Praise God! <laughs> yes, Praise God. It, you know it's amazing when you work so hard at something and then it gets selected. You know, and yes. I was, yeah, you know, it's a great feeling. <laughs> I, I recently know. knew what that felt like when my documentary came out, um, and it was selected at the ICFF. 
at the oh, International Christian Film Night. Congratulations, yes. Thank you. Yeah, it just came out this year in April. And so when they sent the email that it was selected, it was like, oh my God, praise God. This is what it feels like. <laughs> That's so wonderful. Yeah, yeah praise it God. Is, it, it's, a, it's a good feeling. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it, it, it's, <laughs> it, Eric Little used to say, you know, I've got a cupboard full of, of those uh, pots and pans they give me, you know, they didn't, they don't mean anything in the, in the long term, in the big picture, mm-hmm. but they're encouragement, you know, to keep going, keep doing yes. what you're doing. And Amen. maybe they open a few more doors, you know, um, we, so, we can't, um, can't think too highly of them, mm-hmm. but, but we praise God for them because they yeah. can help, you know, and they're seeds, they're seeds that we're Absolutely. planting for, you know, what else God wants to do in the future. Right. That's right. That's Amen. Right. So, Rich, we just have a question here for you oh. uh, by Kevin Lynch. And he's saying, when preparing for a role, do you always have the same routines, methods to get into a character? Or does that vary depending on the role? Absolutely varies on the role. I, I'm i trained in a little bit of Meisner, a little bit of the method, um, Stanislavski. A li- but my favorite is actually social drama, um, which is more interactive. I don't always get to do that with the other actors, but I try to think that way. Like, what's the what's the reality of this world? Um, one of my favorite examples is when I was directing the play Our Town, and I don't know if everybody knows that play, but but there's this. Uh, it, it, it basically focuses on these two young people, George and Emily, and in the play, spoiler alert, sorry, <laughs> Emily dies, and um, so there's a funeral scene. So to prepare the actors for that funeral scene, I did a a social drama enactment of the moment that she dies. So George's father, Doc Gibbs, he's the doctor of the town. He's there trying to save her. Uh, His wife is there because this is their their daughter-in-law. And then both of Emily's parents are in the room. And so I just had all of that action living out. And I would use these techniques to find out what's going on in your heart, what's going on in your mind. And I'll tell you what, every time we performed that scene of the funeral, they were, there were tears on their cheeks. And, and mm. so to, to dig deeper, that's, that's my main goal with any role I get is, is dig deeper. What's, here's what the script says. Now, what do we know? Uta Hagen's nine questions are awesome uh, to, to find out. I don't have them all memorized, but, but they're basically, who am I? Where am I? What, am, what time is it? What time of day? Um, what are my objectives? Um, what do I have to do to achieve those goals? So all of those things, those all really help. They're, they're all helpful tools. And, and when Stanislavski was developing the method, he basically went around to all these different actors to find out, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> and, <laughs> and he kind of wrote it all down and kind of codified it. But that's but, good. That's interesting. Yeah. Wow, you get just given so much nuggets tonight. Oh, you know, well, so, God. Those, yeah, for those that are watching and they're just inspiring actors and actresses, just, this is great information, Rich. Praise God. I, I do have to throw this out, though, because whenever I talk about the method, I always have to follow that up by saying you, you always want to de-roll. If you're ever in a role that is uh, dark or, or romantic, if you're mm-hmm. in a romantic role with somebody, you, you're going to be feeling things that are not necessarily from the Lord because it's in a synthetic environment. Mm -hmm. So I honestly think this is why there are so many breakups in Hollywood. They're, they're on in a show with somebody. They feel Mm -hmm. like they're in love with that person, more in love with the person that they're married to. So it's like, well, Mm -hmm. I'm going to switch, switch horses here. And, and what they, what everyone needs to do is, and don't do romantic scenes that you see in Hollywood. First of all, (laughs) don't, don't take your clothes off. Don't, you know, be doing that. No way. Mm -hmm. But, but but there are like I played uh, one of the leads in uh, Providence and Julie Tapkin and I, I proposed to her. And in that um, moment, you know, it, it's a proposal. And so we're getting emotionally a little raw, you know. And so when mm-hmm. that was done, I just derolled, you know, and what is derolling? I, I kind of like to shake off the role, you yeah. know, but, <laughs> but I, I shook her hand and I said, Julie, thank you so much for, for playing the, my uh, love interest in this. And her, her husband, Jeff was standing there. I shook his hand, Jeff, thank you so much for letting Julie oh, that's perform good. in this. It was just a very professional. Yeah. It down. That's how it should be. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Because stories of romance do need to be told in Christian stories, but, mm-hmm. but we have to be very careful. 
And yeah, and it's a good thing that you work with your wife too. So you can do those with your wife. Yes, as often as I can. I try to yes. get her, if, if, you know, if, if they're still casted, I, I try to get her in. Yeah. And so with that question being um, asked, um, do you have any other future films coming? I am working as the dialect coach in Washington's Armor. I'm also working on the dialect coach on, um, uh, oh no. Um, more than conquerors. Okay. So I'm working. Yeah. So more than conquerors is the story. Washington's armor, by the way, is the story of the young George Washington. Very exciting. It shows how God was really keeping his hands on him. Uh, four bullet holes through his vest, two horses what? shot out from underneath him. He, he sensed, he wrote in his journals, he sensed that God was preparing him for something. And so wow. that's what this, that's what this series is about. It's this, a trilogy of three films. And nice. then More Than Conquerors talks about the colonies in Virginia, Jamestown and, and some of the smaller colonies that were started and how the people had to really rely on God uh, while they were, while they were founding our nation really. And so very, very excited about those projects. And that's for next year for 2020? Um, yeah, we'll be filming More Than Conquerors sometime in the spring. The dates are yet to, to be set. Okay. Uh, same, with, same with Washington's Armor. The first one is out. You mm -hmm. can find the link to that at richdrama.com forward slash Washington's Armor. It's, but basically it's on Epic TV. And uh, parts one and two are uh, part, partly done. There's more filming to come. So uh, looking forward to that rolling into production. And uh, yeah, those are, that's it for the films. Unless there's something I'm not thinking of, but um, we'd love to do more. Yeah, definitely. You know, I pray that God will open the doors for you to do more and just, uh, you know, continue to bless everybody because, uh, oh. you know, people are just being blessed by your movies. Oh, praise yeah. God. You know, yeah. When I told you, when I was reading your IMDb account um, and I saw how many, I was like, wow, he's right up there with like Kevin Sorbo like, with oh. all these movies. <laughs> I was praise like, that's God. amazing. Yeah. Have you praise done God. one with him yet? I was. I wasn't in a scene with him, but mm -hmm. we share a credit, which is which is a, a film that was done by a former student of mine. I was mm -hmm. his first drama teacher when he was 15. He attended what? the Masterworks Festival, Nathan <laughs> Clarkson. And he he did this film, the um, Prodigal Son, um, Confessions, Confessions of a Prodigal Son. And they got Sef Kevin Sorbo to play the father. Look at that. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. So you asked what's coming up. I am very excited about a couple of stage things because mm -hmm. we're bringing my one man play about Eric Little to Paris for the Ooh. for the 2024 Olympics. Now, get this. Eric Little broke the record at the 1924 Paris Olympics. And a hundred years later, Paris is hosting the Olympics again. And that has never happened, that an Olympic city has hosted for the second time exactly a hundred years later. I oh feel like goodness. I feel like God oh, wow. is going to honor his servant. And so, yeah. That's so we're, amazing. We're bringing, bringing the play there and also to the um, Eric Little <laughs> Center in Edinburgh. We have plans to bring that there for the Edinburgh Fringe Festival in 2024. So. I'm so excited for you. Oh, there go. It's very exciting. <laughs> oh, my God. God has very, just been blessing exciting. you and opening doors. And so tell everybody, where, where can they contact you? Sure. So I'm on um, Instagram at Rich Swingle. I know it, it's always so convenient when it's the same thing at everything, but I didn't think that way. So Rich Swingle mm -hmm. at Instagram, Rich Drama on Facebook and Twitter. And Rich Truth on uh, Telegram, Rich Truths, plural, on Telegram. And I think, I, ah, I'm not sure what I put on Truth Social and Gab. Okay. I should have I looked those up. But uh, I think Rich, either Rich Swingle or Rich Drama. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure that they won't have a problem finding you. You are everywhere. Oh, <laughs> praise God. <laughs> yeah, you're everywhere. So, um, Rich, we have a couple minutes left. I don't know if you, anything else that you want to share with us or a word of encouragement out there for inspiring actors, actresses out there. Um, the floor is yours. Well, praise God. I would just say stay in the word, you know. Um, that's, that's, I think, the most important daily discipline for me. I read through the whole of Scripture every year. 
Uh, I have done so since 2012, praise God, with the Lord's help and with you version's help, because it'll read to you. So you can, <laughs> you know, you can listen to scripture while you're making your breakfast. But but that I found to be, especially in these times, you know, um, we mm -hmm. brought um, the host of Spiritual Outdoors Adventures to Masterworks Festival. And, and he was saying that if you keep yourself this far above what the world is doing, in a few years, you're going to be below where the world was, you know, a few years back. So you, you really have to have the plumb line of scripture and, and lining that up with Holy Spirit. And that is, that, that's what makes the difference, you know. That's the secret to your success. I believe so. Yeah. Staying close <laughs> to the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Because I, I, I mean, I work hard, you know, I try to get out there. Mm -hmm. I try to audition as much as I can, but um, but it's, it's really been the Lord, you know, he's the one that's brought these opportunities to pass. So, yeah, yeah. we give God all the glory and everything that we do. And I, and you know, that is why you are so successful, Rich, is because you mm -hmm. put God first and that's a promise from him, right? We Amen. Put God first and he will give you the desires of your heart. And so yeah. that's what's happening here. And I, you know, I did have a Christ over career moment early, very early in my career. And so I was at the Lambs Theater. And I was arranging the library, which now goes for like $15,000 a day. That's not even a, an exaggeration. Oh my goodness. Um, it's, a, it's a boutique hotel now. But at the time we were serving the homeless, you know, for breakfast and or lunch and um, in, the, in the basement and lobby in the, uh, the grill. We called it the grill room. But at any rate, um, so I walk in to organize the books and there's a coaching session going on. There's a director working with uh, with an actor, and I'm I'm trying to leave any anything out that would identify who this is. But um, if you happen to be watching this, sir, I, I'm so grateful for the encouragement you gave me at that point in my life. But but he connected with me later and asked if I was an actor. Now I was like 23, so I was like, oh, he, he knew he knew I was an actor. I was like, oh, it gave me such a jolt and encouragement. And he scheduled a lunch with me and he said, I know so-and-so who has a screenplay coming out about a book she wrote. And I think you're right for the lead role. I wow. can't <laughs> tell you how over the moon I was. So he said, go buy the book, see what you think. I bought the book and saw the theme. And I thought, you know what? I don't think I can do this. I cut to the end, saved myself some time. Mm -hmm. Cut to the end and saw, no, this is drawing people away from God. I can't do this. Mm -hmm. And um, so I I don't want to tell you who played mm -hmm. that role, ended up playing that role, but you know his name. And he played off as a, a woman who you know her name. So, you know, but I listen, I would rather that nobody knows my name than to have done that scene yeah. and and walk mm -hmm. away from the lord and doing it so. yeah no that was definitely the right decision that you made and as you can see what happened afterwards you know god Amen. just opened all these doors because you honored him we have to Amen. honor him in everything that we do that's right that's Amen. right wow yeah. well thank you again rich for just coming on and sharing with us you know your life your your testimony and your movies and you're just an awesome you know a soul of god and you know, we just bless you, you know, and wow. Wow. we ask the Lord to just continue to do great things, you know, as, um, for many, many years. Praise God. Can I, can I pray over you, Margie? Amen. Yes. You've blessed me so much in this hour. Amen. So Lord, I would just want to pray blessings over Margie and yes, the, the Synergy Network, Lord. Uh, Father, just pray for the guests yes. to bless the audiences and take this Take this show where you want it to go, Lord. May it be a blessing to many. And we just pray that everyone who's watched in this hour, who's still watching, Lord, we pray your blessings on them and that you would open up doors, keep them in, in alignment with your, your will, keep them close to your heart and, and use them, Father, during these very dark times. 
and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Rich. And um, shout out to Aaron Essence who's saying amen. And, and God bless you all. Um, so for those that want to know more about Synergy Network Worldwide, please visit us on our website. It's right here, SynergyNetworkWorldwide.com. Thank you again, Rich. And thank you, everyone who joined oh. the show. Oh, and yes, I realized well. you can get to all of my socials at richdrama.com forward slash updates. I also okay. send out emailings. So oh, good. Then yes. it's not me guessing. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody sign up to that so you can get all his updates and the wonderful things that are up that are, are coming up. Thanks Amen. so much, Margie. I mean, thank you so much, Rich. And thank you, everybody. God bless. Blessings.